But that, as you can imagine, it just puts stuff in a 2D grid, okay? The group layout, what it does is it basically tries to group things together. Okay, so I can have labels and labels and text box and all kinds of stuff like that. And it will basically kind of, remember how, how all those little lines coming out of the components and it would kind of try and snap things together? So it would basically group things together, okay? What else? Did we learn anything else? Uh, so we have layout managers. What were some of the, some of the components we went over so far? Buttons, good. So we did buttons, labels, <laughs> J check boxes, right? We're all wrong so far. We got remember the J. And this actually is an important point because if you put a button in there, that that's actually a component, but it's from the AWT library. Okay, so you can get a you can actually put a button in there, just different from a J button. Okay, and you're gonna get you're gonna run into some problem because you're gonna try to call some methods. I think like. Um, set size or one of those methods that you're going to try to call on your button just doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on the button, but it exists on the J button. So do be careful when you add components to remember the J. So we did buttons, we did uh, J text fields, right? J labels. Is that it? <coughs> what? Radio, J radio. Did we put a J radio button out there? Okay, so we had some J radio buttons out there. So, um, let me give you 30 seconds, let me give you about a minute, and what I want you to do is just talk with the partner and just discuss, is there anything that we've covered so far that you don't quite understand, or maybe you still have some questions? Okay, so I'll give you about a minute to kind of discuss that, and we'll kind of come back and just see what we come up with. <laughs>
static. That's what I did. And you have to put an object to it. You have to make an object to it. I don't know how to. When you call it the. Alright. What questions do we still have? <laughs> questions. Based on the, the GUI components, so we'll do some new stuff today, but I want to make sure that any questions you guys still have, we can answer them first. Well, if there is a question I have, I don't know I have it yet. Okay. Danny's going to let the questions come to him. All right, so let's do this. If no one has any particular questions, let's keep going, all right? Does that sound good? Yes. All right, so um, when we left off, we had, if you remember, we had our window, window builder, uh, our window builder project, okay? So we had our three different packages. So remember, we want to start doing common, resources, and views. Uh, what goes in common? Jeremy doesn't know. What? <coughs> yeah, so common code, right? <laughs> common code, like uh, maybe some just common classes that we're, we're using in our project, but it doesn't really have GUI code, right? Who remembers what goes in the resources? Icons, right? So we had our monkey icon in there. There's our monkey, right? All right, and then we had, we had on our views, we had our actual, our GUI ones, okay? So I kind of made this test one. I'll delete it for now. So we were working with this first window builder GUI, all right? So remember, we opened it up, and we had these two different sections. We had the source down here and the design, right? So we could click on the design, and we could actually see what our GUI looked like, right? So, so far, does anyone remember what happens when I click the button? Congrats, <laughs> right? So, congrats, we're awesome, right? We click the button, okay? So, a lot of times when I am interacting with my GUI, right? So let's say I click this button. Sometimes what I might do is you can imagine if I had first name, then I had last name, address, and this is what you're gonna do on the lab's first problem, I believe. Um, when I click on this button, I wanna actually go and pull information from another component, right? So this may be, think of this, you know, this is, we're working in Java, but think if I was doing like a web form, right? I'm, I'm on my checkout page, and I have all this stuff, or first name, last name, address, credit card number. I click this button, this is probably like a, a order or a submit, right? So I click this button, it's going to pull the information from these, these text fields, right? It's gonna pull it, and then, you know, send it off to some database, or to PayPal, or to Visa, or whatever to basically try to make your transaction, okay? So one thing I really need to do is not only just take some action, right? So here I'm, when I click, it's taking this action, but I wanna actually pull information from this, this label, okay? To, or not label, but um, this text field, right? So in order for me to grab information from this text field, what does the access need to be on the text field? In terms of its scope throughout the class. public. Well, it doesn't need to be public, actually. But it needs to be an instance variable, right? As long as I'm in the class, it doesn't matter if it's public or private, I can access it. But it needs to be at least an instance variable, right? So you remember, we, we could click on it, and we could basically tell by this icon. So it says convert field to local. So it is actually a field. It's an instance variable. Okay, so if I go over to my source, we'll, we can scroll up to the top and see J text field, uh, text field. Okay. So what's really nice about this, okay, so obviously my button is uh, instance variable as well, button click me, okay? So what I can do is I can go down and find my handler, my event handler, just search for button click me. Okay, here we go. So obviously it's down here in create, create events. All right, so this time I wanna basically take what I put, what information I have in my text box, and I wanna do something with it, okay? so. Uh, who knows, anyone have any guesses? We kind of did this, but how can I pull the information from that text box? This dot, and then I want to basically uh, see what it was called. Okay, so it was called text field. All right, I broke my conventions, okay? 
I want to call this TXT. That's a better name. That's kind of the standard convention, TXT. All right, so now it's text field. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. <clears throat> And I can basically access this guy by saying text field. Okay, so you can see he highlights blue, so it's recognizing this text field. Actually, that's a horrible name too, huh? What I really want to call it is TXT first name. Okay, so TXT first name. <clears throat> so basically, if I click on this, you could, you should see TXT first name. And then I have LBL first name, right? So these label, the label and the text field should be pretty similar in their naming convention. That way it just makes your code really nice and easy to read. Okay, so all right, so now I'm gonna come back down and you're gonna see it changed it for me. And so I can simply call text first name dot get text. Okay, so now instead of printing, um, what was it, congrats, now what it's gonna actually display to us is whatever I had in this box, okay? So I can say my first name. Dan, so I click the name, and then you'll see that I now have captured uh, the information in my first name text box. Okay, so I can do this. I can also set it. All right, so this is kind of weird, right? But you know, maybe I display it, and then I say G option pane dot. Nope. What I want to do is set it, right? So I say text first name dot set text. A little word this may not work. Let's say psych. Okay. Dan, click me. Hit OK. It changes it. Okay. <laughs> what was it? Okay. So now it's always going to be psych, right? Because it's just going to replace it. But I can, you know, change it to whatever I want. It grabs it. You see that in my text box. But then when I click OK, you see immediately it's going to overwrite it with you know what was there I can obviously I could do something more um, maybe I just want to add to what's there right so I can say I set it to whatever was there right so text first name dot get text okay plus Dan the man right every program should have this autocorrect on it. Click me, Dan the man. I am really the man. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Dan the man, the man, with the plan. All right. So this is true for basically any, any different type of component that we can have. Okay. So text boxes, I can do radio buttons, um, check marks, all kinds of things. Okay, all right, so let's, uh, let's do a new control. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to my designer. All right, so maybe I want to not only have first name, right? So I want to come and put some kind of radio buttons, okay? So um, what is the idea with radio buttons? What is true about a radio button? What's the difference between radio buttons and checkboxes? Yeah, so a, a radio button, you can only have one selected, okay? So when I create multiple radio buttons, they need to be somehow grouped together. Okay, so here I go. Um, I'm going to put this radio button out here, and um, I could put something like this, right? So maybe I just have mail out there, okay? So you can see it gives me a name. That's kind of long, RB, RDBT. I'm just going to put like R, RB, mail, okay? And I'm going to make a new one, all right? So... Put a new one out there, female. Okay, I'm gonna put them side by side. I think it looks a little bit better. Okay, so female, again, radio button female. Okay, all right, so when I now click play, notice I can select both male and female. Now, is this possible? <laughs> It shouldn't be, right? Um, so I can select male or female, and I can also unselect, okay? So these are actually acting more like check boxes at this point, where I can have multiple options, okay? Um, so the way that I can group that, okay, is 
But let me do this. Let's let's bring back. I want to change this. Okay. I'm going to change this. We're going to make a form for what else other than a burrito. Okay. So I'm going to make this um, burrito. This is my Chipotle ordering center. Okay. I'm going to make this a burrito bowl. Okay. And I'll put my name up there. That's fine. Okay. So um, before I continue, I want to label. I also, you know, I, I never want to have radio buttons just kind of hanging out because it's kind of like, well, what are they, right? Um, I, I need to tell the user what do the what do these two radio buttons really correspond to? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of move them out here for a second. I'm gonna put a label. Okay, I need to change my names right to radio button burrito. Okay, and then let's do radio button bowl. Okay. And then I want to get a label out there. Okay, so let's click on J uh, label. I can't find it. There it is. All right. That's like the most painful thing ever, isn't it? When you're like watching someone. Okay. What would be the gen like generic kind of general category of burrito and bowl? I don't even know. What would it be? <laughs> Chipotle. Well, we're at Chipotle, right? So what would you categorize? Entree type. Entree, yeah, entree. I like that entree type. Okay. And on entree, is there two e's in it? Yeah. Yes. Entree. But one's probably got like the little dashy thing. Entree type. All right. It's always good to have a colon in there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to slide this over so it's a little bit closer. So we got my burrito. We got my bowl. Okay. Typically, you don't want the button above stuff, right? So I'm, I'm going to change this because now I'm going to call it like order, right? I'm going to change the text on it to, to order. All right, so I'm going to actually kind of bring my button down here. What I want to do is I'm going to kind of slide it down here, okay? And you'll see that, remember, basically what these little arrows tell me is this button is anchored to the bottom and it's anchored to the right side, okay? such that when I click this, it's gonna always hang out there in the bottom right, which is good, right? You don't really want your button to stay right here. It would look kinda, look a little janky, right? Um, so, but this looks really nice, right? It's kind of uh, resizing very elegantly, all right? So I've got my entree type, okay? All right, so now I wanna connect these two, all right? So it's really easy. All I need to do is, if I just click on them both, right? So if I, hold down control for instance and I can click on them. It's gonna highlight them both. Okay, I could also do it up here, right? If I click over here and then I hold down control, it's gonna select them both. Right click on them, okay? At the very bottom, you'll see set button group, all right? So I'm just gonna make new standard and it kinda just takes care of that for me. So now, okay? So now they're actually connected, all right? So this is nice. Um, let's, if I come down here, let's see what this does. All right, so this actually tells me a little bit about my button group, nothing too useful. Um, so my buttons are actually, you can see it says convert local to field. So my buttons are actually local variables. And that's not what I want, because I want to be able to access my buttons everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. Uh, so that they become instance variables, just to kind of get them up there, okay? All right, so play it just to show you it's still working, okay? So let's say that we want to give uh, one of these the default, right? It's, <coughs> usually we don't want to start a GUI and have one of these um, unselected, right? We usually want to have one of them kind of by default. So what do you think? We're, you know, no one wants a salad, by the way, so we can put salad up there. Okay, so burrito or bowl? What would you think the default should be? <coughs> well, for Chipotle, or burrito. Burrito, right? <coughs> Even though I'll be honest, I haven't got a burrito in quite a while. I used to get them every week, three times a week, but I've been going with the bowl. I think you get a little bit more bang for your buck, you know. Um, so look, this is very simple. I just click on my burrito. See this little? So I go over into my properties, all my options. They're selected. It's false right now. If I click it, it's true. 
right? So you can see it already kind of updates that right there. Okay, so now it at least kind of defaults to something, right? So that way, and a lot of times this may be true, right? What are most people going to select? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter if burrito or bowl is your preference, you want to have selected what most people are going to select, right? Because you want the most people to have as little work as possible to make it through your program, right? Because if they can say, oh yeah, burrito, that's good, that's good, that's good, then we're all set up, right? All right, so um, that's the entree type, okay? So now I might want to say something like, um, well, let's just see what happens if I make this one a true as well. Notice how it didn't actually do it. Okay. So if I come back to burrito, I've, I've selected them both. Now it does it, right? So why does it do this? Right. I can only have one selected. So even if I'm telling it to, the fact that they're both in the group kind of takes care of that, <laughs> that logic for me that says, hey, even if I try to select them both, I'm only going to select, essentially what's happening is it's selecting the first one. Okay. So you can see here's my button group that it created for me. You can see it added the, bur the burrito first and the bowl second. So what I'm guessing is, is if you try to select them both using that designer, whatever guy added, got added first to your button group is going to be the one that kind of takes the precedence and gets the you know, gets to say that um, he's the one that selected, okay? So um, if we want, we would, we would probably add another label here, okay? So um, let's go and now we'll add um, meat. Okay, so label meat, perfect. And then I'm going to add a few more radio buttons, okay? So we'll just add chicken. Okay, we will add steak. Okay, and then we will add, not a label, but a radio button. All right, what's the third choice? What do you guys like besides chicken and steak? Tofu. Tofu. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it sofritas? Yeah. So, sofritas. Is that it? All right, we'll go with it. All right, so, um, so again, I need to add these to the group. Let's go ahead and I'll fix kind of the names of them. So um, the biggest thing is you want to be consistent. Even if you don't use my exact naming conventions, you want to be consistent with all your buttons or all your radio buttons. So they all have the same prefix. Okay, so I'm going to say radio button. All right, and then I'm going to say radio button. Okay, so again, obviously this one's selected, but now these guys, I can select them all, okay? So now I need to add these guys to their own group. So again, hold down control and just click them all. And then I right click and I say button group. And you see what, uh, it actually shows me a earlier button group. So I could add it to the earlier button group. So what I actually wanna do is let's come in into button groups and let's see if we can change the name. Okay, so this is good. So let's just call this BT, G um, button group entree, okay? So this is gonna make a little bit more sense because now when I try to create a new one, right, I'll say, hey, set button group entree. Hey, do I just wanna add it to the entree? Maybe I decided that I do wanna add the salad. Then it's really easy, right? I just come and add it to the salad, okay? So now I'm gonna say, well, I'm just gonna add a new one. So I'm gonna call this, um, see I have this new one. I'm just gonna call this BTG meat. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and we'll just set chicken as the default. I'm really hungry now, by the way. <laughs> I've been getting really hungry in this class lately. Really, eh? Okay. So we have two groups. This looks a little weird, right? Having the the entree hangover. So sometimes what you're gonna have, what you're gonna see is that. When you add new components in there, <laughs> that group layout that we're using, it's doing a lot of really cool, powerful stuff for us. Sometimes it will do stuff we don't like, okay? Sometimes the group layout will be your worst enemy. I promise you, you will want to like break your computer sometimes. Because you'll like, you'll be like, oh, just drag it right here, and then it'll like pop over somewhere, okay? So just be aware that that will happen. You're gonna have some instances where you're gonna get a little frustrated at the group layout, but just remember all that it's done for you, okay? <laughs> Don't forget what it's doing for you. 
um, when you get mad. Okay, so for instance, I may have to drag this over, not here, but on the, my designer, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of drag it over, get it lined up. Hopefully, it doesn't snap. Okay, there we go. So now it looks pretty good. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do is let's do um, some sauces, right? So they always ask you mild or medium or hot, right? But really, you can have more than one. Right, they asked you like kind of with the or, like, do you want my? I want all three of them, right? So, how many of you guys get every possible topping you can get when you go to Chipotle? <laughs> Justin, <laughs> these guys are getting their money's worth, right? So, let's go ahead and we'll add one more label here, okay? And we're gonna call this um, topping, sounds like ice cream, huh? Fixins, <laughs> fixins, <laughs> uh. What's like the real official word for the? Is there a word that I can use? Uh, Side extras. I like that. Extras. <laughs> Bless you. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I got my labels extra. I'm just going to add a few check boxes. Okay. So here I've got check box. All right. So I'm just going to call this one mild. Mouth sauce. All right. All right. It gives me this crazy long prefix, which I don't like. Let's just go with CHK. All right. So there's mild. We'll add another one out here. And this one we'll call medium sauce. Okay. So again, change the name CHK. And we'll do one more. And so I'm going to call this one hot. All right, so finally, CHK. All right. CHK, okay, I already did it. All right, so now, You'll notice that these are like kind of independent, right? So I can I can have all three. If we were to keep going, we would add like the sour cream and the cheese and the lettuce and all that stuff. But let's not get carried away, right? Oh, what happened to my buttons? <laughs> <laughs> they moved over when you placed the first checkbox. You guys didn't even tell me. <laughs> I was so hurt. Like you just let me like come to this great moment of embarrassment. <laughs> We might as well make it like the whole thing right at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when did it mess up? <laughs> when you put the first checkbox. The first, you guys really didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so upset. All right, so let's try and drop this back over. So that's a, this is a great example of what happens, right? It, it'll, it'll try and line things up. Sometimes it, it gives you what you want. Sometimes you basically got to... You gotta show. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say you gotta show it who his boss is. You know what I was gonna say. All right, all right. Well, let me tell you about this very magical command while we're doing this. Okay. Does anyone know what this magical command is gonna be? Control Z. Control Z. Command Z. All right. Whenever it does this, hit Control Z. Right. It will undo it, and that way you can try again. Right. It's very powerful. All right, let me try something a little different. Right there, maybe. All right. Sometimes you gotta like, you gotta trick it a little bit. You gotta like, get it close. You gotta sneak up on it, and then you. Gotta, oh, let's see. It caught me. Uh, there we go. See. Now I'll come back a little bit. All right. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta choose your battles wisely. All right. We could probably. All right. How many guys this drives you crazy? The fact that this isn't perfectly lined up, right? It drives me a little crazy. But you know what's going to drive us more crazy if we spend two hours trying to get them <laughs> You have a question, Andrew? Do you have a suggestion? I, I was going to say, are you able to like arrow them over? Um, it's like a good question. No. All right. So what's happening here? Let's see. Let me. Sometimes it's like, okay, let me get all these guys together and then move them. And then let me get all these guys together. 
Move them. Hey! Wait, what's the difference? You switch burrito and bowler. Right? <laughs> 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 All right, Mr. Details. <laughs> Can't fool you. <laughs> All right, so if you want it to be lined up, there we go. Come on, that deserves a lot. All right, so. <laughs> okay, there's a principle in computer science that goes like this sometimes it's not worth asking a lot. Because we can't always know. Um, the answer is I don't know. You know, honestly, this is something I've done with for, for years, right? You're gonna, I told you before this happened, it's gonna happen, right? And it's just, it's just trying, like I said, it's doing a lot of really nice things for us. Like it really is, it's, it's lining stuff up and it's kind of, kind of trying to connect stuff together. But sometimes when you move, it was kind of snapped to one thing right above it and then you kind of unsnap it and then try to snap to something else and just gets a little mess. So like, what I would recommend is in those cases, just what we just did, you're going to have to do, right? You're going to have to do some trial and error. Like, even, you know, you have to move stuff around and try to move it as like multiple objects back and forth. And there was no reason why that second time worked, right? That the first time wouldn't have worked. As far as we were concerned, it looked the same, but it happened to work. Okay. All right. So finally, let's do one more, right? So we've got a few items here. Let's add a J text area. Okay, so I'm going to, let me first go ahead, I'm going to make all these public, or not public, I'm going to make them instance variables, so I'm going to click this, <laughs> so I'm going from in the code to at the top, that's kind of what the arrow is telling me. <coughs> okay, so now, if I go to the top of my code, you'll see I have all these, um, all these different instance variables up there. All right, so what I want to do now is let's make a, a text area. Okay, have we done a text area yet? I don't think we've done a text area. We've done text field. So let's say we'll make this, um, let's put a label out there, okay? We'll make this one a special, special instruction. Okay, this is going to do something crazy. I know it. Because I have a feeling that it's going to try to line up the right side. All right. Cross your fingers. Hey, but that was pretty good, right? So, so this is an example, right? Like the fact that this is really typically we want these things to line up. And it did that very nicely, all right? So just remember when it's not doing what you want, remember that it did this. <laughs> remember that it is, it's trying to be your friend, right? This is a good, valuable life lesson, right? Sometimes your friends are going to hurt you, <laughs> even when they're not trying to. If they're trying to help, they're going to do something bad, right? So, all right, let's get back to CS lessons. All right, so J text, we have text panes. We have actually a few different options here. Um, J text area, J text pane, J editor pane. Um, so here it says, J text area is a multi-line area that displays plain text. Down here, a text component to edit various kinds of content. Text pane, a text component that can be marked up with attributes that are represented graphically. Graphically, okay. I don't actually know the specific intricacies of all three of these, but as you can kind of tell, J text area is kind of the most basic. The other ones, it sounds like you can basically do some more formatting, like maybe actually turn it into a. You guys ever heard like WYSIWYG? Anyone ever heard that phrase? Never? You guys have seen, you guys have used WYSIWYGs. Where's my marker? All right. Don't have a marker. Oh, it's in my pocket. Yeah. All right. So WYSIWYG, let me spell that for you. WYSIWYG. <laughs> okay. Does anyone, I'll give you a hint. This is an acronym. Does that help? No, no, no. All right, someone's Googling it, I know. <laughs> WYSIWYG. All right, watch this. What you see is, is yeah. what you get. Okay, WYSIWYG. All right, how many of you guys have ever think you've seen a WYSIWYG editor now? Yeah, where have you seen one? Um, like, a 
lot of times if you like are trying to like make a website on one of those free like make your own website things. That's yeah. Really, really, what you see is what you get. Exactly. So like WordPress, for instance, has a WYSIWYG. If you ever do it, basically what it is is um, like instead of writing like HTML code, I can write it almost like it's a Word document. Okay. So I can make stuff bold and I can make like headings so it makes it bigger and change the font. But it's as I'm doing that, as I'm writing it like it's a Word document. It's creating like HTML code behind the scenes, so I can switch over, just like what we're doing here, right? We have the design. This is kind of like the what you see is what you get, right? And then I have the actual source code behind, which is the real magic, right? Um, but this is specifically talking about like a text editor type of thing, okay? So you can probably with these, you know, these kind of advanced ones, JTextPane, J Editor. I think this is going more along the lines of. Um, giving that ty type of functionality if you wanted it, being able to add different types of fonts and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our um, sp our text field out there. Okay, so I'm just gonna no, not text field, but J text area. Okay, so with this one, you want to click and drag, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of drag it out to about right there. <coughs> And there goes my butt. Oh. I'm just so discouraged. I can't, like, I almost can't even continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. J uh, text area. Let me just get it out. I'm going to trick it again, right? Get it out there. You sneak it up, you know. Oh. Sneak it over a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna sneak it up. Hey, look at that. All right. So there now it's actually snapping, which this is what I want, right? See how it has that little blue arrow that's snapping to the right side of my text field at the top? That's really good. Okay. So now you see it's going to be anchored to the stuff right above it. Okay. And it's gonna grow horizontally. Okay. So I'm gonna basically drag it and you'll see it's going to grow, okay? What's wrong with this? Did you lose the snap on your order button? Yeah. yeah, I did. What's wrong with this though? What's wrong with my J text? It's just a white box. So it kind of just doesn't look right, right? Something's a little off. What, what's off with it? Probably need some kind of border. Guess what we can do, guys? All right, I'm going to click on it. <laughs> And if I come over on my, my properties over here, there should be, what's that? There's a button next to the convert field, the local, whatever, the one on the right. Oh, advanced, for advanced, yeah. Um, oh yeah, there it is, border, okay. So I can actually click on this, and there's going to give me um, some different options, okay. So down at the bottom, it kind of gives you a preview, although I don't know if that's, not really a preview for this. It does it for like panels. So I'm just gonna try one bevel border. All right, so you can see that already looks a lot better. All right, so you can actually kind of see it's a, this cool 3D type of thing, right? Um, so you can play with this. So remember uh, what Jonathan said, and we kind of pointed this out the other day, show advanced properties, right? So it kind of gives you the most commonly used properties to start off with, but then if you click this, it'll show you kind of some of advanced ones. So the border, did it just add border up there <laughs> since I changed it? Maybe. So you can kind of play around with this, right? So maybe if I try compound, that appears to <laughs> change it back to nothing. Uh, etched to border. Okay. So that one actually kind of matches with what I already have there. So I'll keep that. Even though I actually like that one where it's kind of a 3D. I think it looks, it looks sharp. Um, all right. So what we notice is our button no longer Snaps, okay, so I'm just gonna pull it over here to kind of see now it's snapping to stuff. So it's it's now anchored to the bottom right. Alright, so now when I drag this, okay. So I'm gonna come through and I am a really tough customer. Okay? So I've got some special instructions. Um extra meat, extra sour cream, right? Don't forget the chips. 
아. 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 어. What happened? It's <laughs> going, right? All right. What, what happened, right, was I ran out of room in my box. Okay? There's a few things I could do, right? I could, I could come back here and I could drag it far enough so that it actually kind of snaps to this order. You don't really see it, but it's close enough. And then I could say, see how I'm, I am now dragging, right? So I have all my, my stuff in there. And it, it's kind of resizing it a little bit, right? Um, but, you know, if I'm small enough, right, that's actually not what I want. Okay. So really what I want is if, if I have enough stuff in here, I want it to add some scroll bars. That way I can just click down. Okay. So the way this works in, uh, in Java is essentially here is my my J text area, okay, my JTA, and I need to essentially surround this with some kind of scrollable area, okay? So this J text, it can scroll, but it needs to be basically encompassed in this, what's called a, a what's called a J scroll pane, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, I think it's easier to just get rid of this for now, okay, so I'm going to delete this. Um, and I'm going to put out my J scroll pane. Okay, so I'm going to put it out. Let's see if I can do this. And again, you just drag it to about how big you wanted it. Okay, so now I'm just going to put, you know, S C R scroll pane, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to call this. This is my special special instructions. Okay, and then. I come and I grab my JTEXT area. So I'm going to grab a new one. So JTEXT area. And you'll notice it kind of has these three column headers, row headers, viewport. Okay. You basically want to just take it and click on this viewport. And it's going to make sense. You just want it to fill up kind of the biggest section. Um, okay. So now, now we're in good shape. I'm going to come and rename this, right? So um, maybe text area. I don't know. You can call it text if you want. But let's call it text area special instructions. Okay. So now it's going to work. Hey, look at that. Okay. So now apparently I don't have it snapping at all, but I can, what about if I go far, let's see what happens. Okay. So now it'll actually add the scroll panes. And this is really nice, right? Cause it only adds it when we actually need it. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can, Kind of get this to snap. Now this is a little weird. Um, when I'm resize, if I say I want to resize and try to snap it, I actually have to do it with the scroll pane. So you can see when I click on the actual scroll pane, it gives me all these options for how it's snapping. So I'm just going to say, all right, go ahead and auto resize horizontally and auto resize vertically. Okay. So now it's going to auto resize it, but even you know, depending on how big it is, it's still it's still going to add the scroll pane. So, so this is a really great solution, right? Because it's going to kind of resize it. And this may help me a lot of times, right? If I don't have quite so much, right? This may be a good solution. But eventually, I can only make this as big as my, my screen, right? So at some point, the scroll bars are kind of like the fail safe to make sure. Because I want to make sure at any given time, my user can access whatever they type. They can see whatever they type, or else we're going to be a little bit upset. Okay. All right. So, um, any questions at this point? Okay. So, any questions on scroll bars, J text areas, any of the buttons we've used? Let me just show you how to access this stuff real quick. Okay. So, in my source, I'm going to come back to my button, right? So here's my button handler. Okay, so I was accessing the first name there. I can access all this other stuff, okay? My this button is not working. Maybe I need to make it public or something, but you don't want to do that. Um, so basically, I'm going to get... Uh, so this is where the naming convention really helps, okay? So I'm going to say 
hey, I want to grab my radio button and check if um, burrito was uh, was selected. Okay, so I can basically say, hey, RB burrito. I know that it was a radio button, so it starts with RB, and then you can see I have dot and is selected. Okay, so this is going to tell me it's either going to return a true or a false. Okay, so I can say if If burrito is selected, then I can just, you know, print burrito, okay? Else, um, bowl, I yell at them, okay? So, Order, it's going to click, you know, what I normally had up there, and then burrito, since burrito is selected, right? So if I click bowl now, and I order, it's the man, ordered a bowl, okay? So this same thing works with the check marks as well, right? So I can say CHK uh, mild sauce, I think was one of them, dot is selected, okay? So I can do the same thing. I'll go ahead and just copy this. Okay, so check. And then mild. And then finally, no mild. We're very explaining well or ordering. All right. So um, again, so mild is checked. Order, I'm going to get my burrito and then mild. If I don't have order, right, it doesn't matter what anything else is. It's just checking this mild. Okay? Burrito, no mild. Okay? So when you are working with radio buttons in the same group, it's sufficient, okay? It's sufficient to just check one of them. I mean, you have to write the code to j basically do it an if else. But once you've determined that one of these is selected, you know, for a matter of fact, that all the rest are not selected. Okay? Does that make sense? So if I, if I know it's a burrito, I know then that it's not a bowl, it's not a salad, or whatever other options we have, not tacos, right? However, this is not the case for checkboxes, right? Checkboxes, I wouldn't do it if else. I would do if, 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 right? So with this guy, I can do an if else, 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 or else if, right? But with this guy, um, the, the check boxes, I do need to do else's. Okay, if I actually want to check, you know, the hot sauce now. Okay, all right. So um, let's do. Okay, so and then obviously just to kind of show you, we had also the J area special instructions and. What's that? Yeah, oh, T TA, right? Oh, well, sometimes you just gotta <coughs> go back. TA, special instructions. Oh, you know what it was? It's a local variable. Okay, so I need to convert it to, uh, I need to convert it to a, a field. That way I can access it down here. Okay, so. See, we had it right, but now it's going to pop up. Okay, so here I can get the text. Okay, and I can print that out if I want. So it's the same as the um, text or as a text field. Okay, um, five minutes left. Do you want to see a new control? Okay, so let's vote. Who? Uh, you can either. This is so much fun, right? <laughs> Three amazing options. Um, we can either look at a new component if you want to see. Um, like a drop down list is a, uh, called a combo box, or we can look at the J list, which may be a little complicated, so I would recommend holding off on that one. So we're removing all your options. Or uh, how to export to a jar file so I can actually just run this thing without even opening code. Jar file. Jar file. Jar file. Wow. So that's required. That's required for the project, right? But not till you're you're done with it. Okay. Um, all right. So. Up until this point, we have been running, um, you know, we have to basically open up our, um, 
our code, you know, open up Eclipse, and we have to hit play, compile it, and then run it. This is not a very good flow for a user, right? Because at this point, you could actually imagine giving this program to someone, right? Hey, you know, maybe Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we make our millions, guys. <laughs> Chipotle needs this, right? So let's all go to Chipotle after this and see if they will buy. <laughs> we might want to add like, you know, the other types of meats and stuff. Um, but you can imagine at this point, I could actually make some pretty useful programs, right? That, you know, just help me do, because there's a lot of stuff that I can think of that I do on an everyday basis that, you know, it would be really nice to have a simple program like this that would store information and kind of compute it for me. Um, maybe like if you're doing types of business, you might think, hey, I can't find anything that does exactly what I want. So let me create a program that I can insert like how much I paid for this thing and kind of do my accounting for me. You pay a lot, a lot of money for something like this and it's gonna have a lot of features obviously. But if you just want some simple features. But it's not cool to have to open up and look at all this code, right? The other problem is they can mess up your code, right? And then they're gonna call you and say, hey, it's broken. We don't want people calling us, right? Um, we don't, <laughs> right? they're already calling you, right? So let's prevent that from happening more. All right, so here's what we do. It's as simple as this. We have over here, all you know, I have all my projects and stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on my project, for instance, okay? I'm gonna right click it, and I'm gonna click export. Okay, export. It's gonna come up with all these options, okay? So obviously I'm working with the Java programming language. So there's three different types of jars, okay? So jar is basically, what I can, it's almost like a zip file in some sense that just kind of packages every, think about it, a jar, like a physical jar, you can put stuff in, okay? So that's what it's doing, it's basically putting all your Java files and your resources in there, okay? So what I actually want is I want a runnable jar file, okay? I want someone to be able to basically click on this and then run it, okay? So I click next, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you what your launch configuration is, okay? All this really means is which project do you want to turn into a jar file, okay? Which project? So I'm working with my window builder project. So I mean, this is I have so much stuff in here, right? Because I have so many projects. So I'm gonna find it. Happens to be this one, I think. I don't know why it's test one. That scares me. Because that was something else. I think it's this one. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so I basically need to choose the project that I want to export, and then the last step is where do I want to export it, okay? So you can see I already, I was making Lab 4 demo last time, so I always like to just do it on my desktop. I'm going to call it whatever I want, right? So, um, Chipotle Deluxe app. Please buy me. Okay, we'll get some subliminal message when we send it to them, okay? All right, so there's three options right here, and this is very important. Extract require libraries and to generate a jar, package require libraries, copy require, okay? I wanna make sure that this package, I wanna put everything in there, okay? I don't want this file to depend on anything else. So I just hit that and I click finish. It's gonna tell me, finish with warnings, even though it gives us big scary red X. It always tells me warnings, don't worry about it. Okay, you see it, it did create it. Um, I don't know, it should close nicely, but it doesn't. Oh, probably because I was still running. All right, so now, here it is. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Big fail, huh? Let's see, maybe... Oh, I bet it wasn't really this project. First WB GUI, let's see. Um, did I have another file in here? First WB GUI. Okay, um, export. There it is. I did the wrong one. Okay, so first WB GUI window builder. Um, you know, we'll just call it Chipotle, right? So, Chipotle jar package required. So now click finish. See, now it gives me a less intimidating error message because the problem was there was actually no GUI in there, right? So now I double click and there's my GUI. Okay, so you could actually, you guys could actually send this GUI to, to your friends and they could run it by just double click, as long as they have Java installed on their computer. All right, 
So um, with that, have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.